Welcome, Megan. Hello, Pat. Thank you for having me. Let's go with the question that I think is probably coming up for many of us. This is unusual. Husband and wife met during your training, and in the year that you got married, you both flew into space separately, you on the Hubble telescope mission, and Bob on the mission to construct the space station. And ironically, if your mission had gone awry or needed help, Bob was assigned to be on the rescue craft. You know, launch day is for all of us a time of great excitement, yes, but also anxieties about the risk and, and the fear we might feel inside just watching. How do you prepare for launch day? Well, Pat, one of the most important things to focus on for me was really preparing my son and making sure that he was ready and that he enjoyed the experience of watching his father launch and complete this mission that he'd been training for really for most of our son's life. So when we walked out onto the roof of the launch control center and we could see the rocket off in the distance and we're you know, lining up against the rail, ready for the countdown. And of course I got my arms around him and we hear three, two, one, lift off, and then, and then we see the rocket carrying his father, you know, jumping off the launch pad. And it, it, for me, it was this moment of, of just an outpouring of, of feeling and emotion that had been, you know, with me for such a long time. And, and you know, this, I'm crying and I'm laughing and I'm just shaking. And, and so I had to let go of my son, who was fine, by the way, he was completely fine. And, and I'm covering up my mouth because I don't know what kind of sounds I'm going to make with, you know, this, this complete terror and this complete joy at this moment. And thinking about, you know, what it took to get there, my husband, you know, an accomplished astronaut, uh, an experienced Air Force flight test engineer, he, he'd formerly been the chief astronaut, and I've watched him launch into space twice before, and it's been terrifying every time. Um, why is that? So, you know, of course I love my husband, but it's more than that. It's that I love my husband, and right now I can't do anything at all to impact the situation. I'm, I'm standing on a rooftop, I have no job, I have no way to contribute. And so that's where, for me, the fear comes from, is that feeling of helplessness. And so over and over in my life, I've seen, of course, that training and preparation can get us ready for an event like that, but it's, it's having the input, having the ability to impact your situation that is what removes the fear and, and balances it, it balances it for you. So the, the education, the experience, that's, a, you have to have that, but also having a voice, um, having an input, having a seat in the cockpit is what allows you to leave that fear behind. But what about your son? Megan, uh, he won't be there. He'll be on the ground watching mommy take off into space just as he watched his dad who returned safely. But how have you taken special preparations for him to see mommy doing the same? Well, his, his first reaction when learning that mommy was gonna go into space, first he told me, no, mommy, you can't go. Um, that was his very first response. And then as he got more comfortable with the idea, you know, his dad went up and came back and then he said, well, okay, you can go for 30 days, but 180 days, that's too much. You can't, you can't go for that long. Um, he's also obviously seen his father go through all of this. And so it, it, for him, it's become this normal thing. This is a normal thing that mommy and daddy do. We'll read stories back and forth while I'm here in Russia over, over video conference. Um, and I was given the idea to, to fill a jar um, with chocolate kisses and then he can have a kiss from mommy every day that I'm gone. So um, he likes that idea very much. Well, just to be clear, it's a great message that this young man is getting about mommy and daddy doing the same job, isn't it? And I just want to bring forward a quote from the SpaceX leader, Gwen Shotwell, who was asked about your going and your husband's going, and she was questioned about your flying in the same pilot seat or spacecraft as your husband, and here was part of her answer. I'd like to point out that, you know, Megan is first and foremost an astronaut when it comes to our perspective. Well, I did want to reach through the screen and, and high five Ms. Shotwell when she said that. I, I very much appreciated uh, that remark. You know, it has changed for me over the years. The first time I flew in space, um, I was married, but I was not yet a parent. And both my husband and I 
came to NASA as single people and, and we met and married, of course, uh, at NASA. It's a different um, thing to take on as a family that you're doing this thing that's for yourself. Um, it's also, you know, kind of for the greater good. The, the notion of exploration and discovery is, is something, you know, to engage in. And I think that that example, um, you know, for my son to see that his parents are engaged in this thing, um, that yes, it takes us away from him, but it's in, those, these are important things to do. And you were in high school, Megan, when the Challenger spacecraft tragically exploded and, and the whole world confronted the realities of the risk that you and your husband and other brave women and men are taking. I remember that moment and I still hold my breath every time during each and every launch. So how do you find the balance between knowing the risk are real and you're feeling prepared enough to do what you have to do and what you want to accomplish? Well, the, the crux of it for us for um, being feeling prepared and participating is, is really training. So we train our way into that seat. You spend literally hundreds of hours preparing in every possible way. We break down every system into you know, bite-sized pieces, basically. We have these wonderful instructors who, have, who are you know, professional instructors, basically, and they know exactly what it's gonna take for us to learn these systems inside and out. And so sort of one system at a time, and then they put all the systems together, and then they break every possible thing that they can think of to break so that you have to, as a team, as a crew, solve these problems and work together to get through the situation. And the reason that they do that is not, um, it's not because they think those exact things are going to happen. It's, it's to build you up. You prove to yourself that you have the ability to work when maybe some really terrible things are happening and to make your situation better. And the thing that's going to happen isn't necessarily going to be the specific one or even hundred different scenarios that they've shown you, but you've, you have worked and you have developed your skills, um, which will support you to, to a, kind of tackle any problem that you might have, not just as a crew in, in the ship, but now you've worked uh, with the whole team on the ground um, and you know you've, you're gonna be able to, to solve those situations working together. Has there ever been a time when you felt fear, real fear, or, or maybe just being unprepared? A couple of years ago, I had the, uh, I'll say opportunity, but I had the situation where I was um, voluntold to, uh, to uh, take an assistant directorship job. And it was something I was very reluctant to do. I didn't feel uh, prepared for it. I didn't feel like I had the right skill set and I didn't, didn't feel like I was gonna be good at it. And none of those are good, are good feelings. There's a part in your book, Pat, where you say, I realized at some point that being ready could mean being ready to learn quickly while doing. And you know that, that expression, that's exactly what it means to be an astronaut. I, I know how to do that. I can learn on the job. I can learn quickly. And so you know, I did, I did dive into this job and I did learn uh, you know, quickly while on the job. Um, I, I can't say that I you know, was the best person ever to hold that job, but I, it was important to me to do my very best. Um, and to be part of this new team. Women are particularly prone to this, where we think, oh, I haven't had training for that, or I haven't had a job like that before, I, I can't do it. But you can do it. You take all of the skills that you've developed and all of the other things that you're doing, and you use those to support you while you're, while you're learning quickly, <laughs> while doing. Such good advice, Megan. I won't be learning by doing flying into space, but, but taking that knowledge that we can learn by doing and we can be prepared, so important. How would you describe the changes in you personally uh, from being off this earth? But in the very beginning, when I, when I first launched into space, you're very busy. You're you know, on this um, spaceship that's just gone through a launch sequence, and you have to turn your spaceship into an orbiting platform. And so you're very busy. So we have these books, and we're heads down in the books, and we're going through all the steps and uh, moving switches and loading computer programs. And I only had a brief moment of time to kind of look out the window and say, yep, that's, that's where the Earth is. That's exactly where it should be. And that's how it's looked in all of the pictures I've seen. Uh, growing up and so um, that was you know I got right back to work and so it wasn't until I had more of an opportunity to to gaze out the window for a, a while while I was operating the robotic arm that I could really observe the earth I remember so clearly the first time I saw a lightning storm across a huge expanse of the ocean and the the lightning it, it appeared in different colors and it, it lights up the inside of the clouds and makes this kind of you know, dramatic pattern. It was like having your own laser light show laid out below you. And, and the realization struck me that this is, not, this is not static. This is not a photo. This is our Earth. It's a real living system. 
It's hard to describe how impossibly thin it looks to you with the, the vast blackness of space on one side and our beautiful Earth on the other side and this just incredibly thin layer of atmosphere that, that's all that's keeping us and all of us alive and every, every life form on Earth, that's all that's keeping us alive. And it's a, it's a very visceral reaction, this very strong urge to want to protect um, the, the spaceship Earth that we're all, you know, you and I are both, are both crew members here and, and you know, we all got to work together um, to take care of this ship that we're moving on through the universe. So it, it was a very, um, a very powerful response to seeing that. Thank you for your work, Megan. And what do you say, safe flight? Uh, is there, what's next? We say Godspeed or we say Ad Astra to the stars? Ad Astra to the stars, Godspeed, Megan MacArthur. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you so much.